here we go, talking a little bit about Iceberg and Postgres. Thank you. Uh, yes, thanks a lot for inviting me. Uh, I wanted to talk a bit about uh, a journey we've been on for the last one and a half years to build a Postgres data warehouse using Iceberg. So my background is mostly in the Postgres space. Uh, I've been working on Postgres extensions for over 10 years. Uh, first at a company called Citus Data, uh, we built an extension for sharding Postgres uh, that was later acquired by Microsoft, but we also built a lot of other extensions uh, throughout that uh, period. And our sharded Postgres extension was really kind of more meant for operational workloads, but over these 10 years, like maybe one in four companies that came to us, they were actually looking for a Postgres data warehouse. And so we knew there was a lot of demand, but it was kind of hard for us to build so far. Um, because the database space is sort of divided into these two factions. Uh, there's the OLTP faction and there's the OLAP faction. These are different people, different companies, different systems. Uh, different workloads. Uh, the people don't really talk to each other very much, but they do agree on a few things. It's like, you should probably use SQL, you should probably have transactions, uh, DDL, and, and that kind of stuff. But OLTP systems, they optimize for a very high rate of queries, high concurrency, low response time, with each query doing relatively little work, just looking up a handful of rows from a large table uh, with very low response time. And OLAP systems, they actually optimize for doing relatively large scans on a lot of data quickly. Not so much many queries per second or many queries concurrently, but just getting through a lot of data quickly. And both of these workloads are really important and they have to are often uh, happen at very large scale. So the systems are optimized to the extreme for high query throughput in the case of an OLTP system like Postgres or uh, scan speed in case of uh, OLAP systems like Snowflake, BigQuery, Databricks, uh, ClickHouse. Um, but one thing that kind of changed the equation a little bit is, for, for me is was the appearance of DuckDB as an embedded uh, database engine that you could put into other software. You could put it into uh, dashboard software. You could put it into a Python script. You could also put it into another database. Um, the other piece is Postgres is very extensible. Uh, anything that Postgres isn't really good at, you could make it good at by writing an extension. Like two years ago, Postgres was horrible at storing vectors. Now it's actually one of the leading vector databases because there's a PG vector extension. Um, and DuckDB itself is also extensible. And both of these systems, they target single node, they're similarly licensed, um, and DuckDB actually takes quite a bit of inspiration from Postgres. For example, its SQL syntax is uh, derived from Postgres, and also because of that, a lot of the functions from Postgres are implemented in DuckDB. Uh, so they actually uh, are, are fairly uh, similar in terms of uh, usage. And so we could build now a system where we integrate DuckDB into Postgres. Uh, the other thing that sort of changed the equation is that we now have Iceberg. And Iceberg is actually a wonderful fit for, for Postgres. Because if you build this kind of hybrid architecture, what will probably happen is you have just traditional Postgres tables stored in a buffer manager on a block device, and you have analytics optimized table. But what do you do with those? You could store them in DuckDB, but Postgres uh, stores all of its state in a write-ahead log, and it typically has replicas, and the state needs to get replicated from, for example, a primary node to a hot standby, and then if the primary node fails, the hot standby takes over, and then everything else that was on the primary is now gone. Uh, but of course, if we store data in Iceberg in S3, uh, that's still going to be there. Second, Postgres uh, can be used as a catalog. It can be used directly if you use the, the SQL protocol or indirectly because, for example, Lakekeeper keeps its state in Postgres. So Postgres is actually quite uniquely positioned to be both an Iceberg query engine and a catalog. And then it has extensions, which you can use to add something like an Iceberg table format, where if you write to the table 
Uh, you generate parquet files and Afro files and JSON files and put them in S3 or object, other object storage. And if you query the table, we can carve out the relevant piece of the query and give that to, uh, to DuckDB. Uh, and then that can do it relatively fast. And um, the catalog will also get replicated uh, because it's just stored in a regular Postgres table. It's just like, uh, what's the latest metadata JSON and some other metadata about the table. And even if the replica is like a little bit behind or we at some point like restore a server to an older state, that catalog is pointing to a metadata file that's probably still there because in Iceberg, we kind of leave the older versions, the older files, we leave them around. Um, so that's a kind of nice property because then you can also do uh, transactions across multiple Iceberg tables pretty easily or transactions across Postgres tables and Iceberg tables. So we built an implementation of this uh, that we call Crunchy Data Warehouse. Uh, basically, the Crunchy Data had already had a managed Postgres service. And so we added a sort of uh, extra feature where you can have a set of extensions that implement Iceberg uh, and also some like ways to query CSV and JSON and other files in your data lake. And then uh, when you query those Iceberg tables, will uh, the query planner will figure out which part of the query it can send to uh, can send to DuckDB and it will accelerate that. And then underneath DuckDB, we have, uh, we use the NVMe drives of uh, the server to cache all the files. And we actually do write through caching. So if we generate a Parquet file or an Afro file, it goes uh, into S3, but it also goes into the cache so that when we query that table back, it's actually just a local operation a lot of the time, unless it doesn't fit in the cache. Um, and so what happens then is uh, you can create uh, a type table via any Postgres client. And you just add using Iceberg at the end. And so this will create the, uh, the metadata file and uh, insert a record into the catalog, which is just a Postgres table. Um, and then, for example, if you insert some data and then you update, uh, what will happen is that update will uh, run a query on DuckDB which has this kind of read parquet function to scan a bunch of parquet files. And it can return the file name and the file row number uh, for all the rows that uh, match the filter from the update. And so we can turn those into a position delete file, which has this file name and row number. And then the new rows coming out of the update go into a new parquet file. We update the, the JSON and the, uh, the, the Afro files and uh, we commit to the catalog. And so you can also then uh, do multiple updates in a transaction. You can actually do sub-transactions because you can roll back, uh, like the, the commit is just a local commit of the catalog records. Uh, and then if you query that table, if it has some position deletes, uh, we'll delegate that again to DuckDB as much as possible. So um, the, the table here will actually get replaced with uh, a call to read parquet. And if there are position delete files, we'll do a sort of anti-join where we filter out uh, the file names and row numbers uh, based on which ones appear in the position delete files. And we, we kind of write the position delete files in a way that there's a position delete file only deletes from one specific data file. And then we keep some metadata in Postgres that says, okay, this, this that file deletes from that file, this file, uh, file deletes from that file, which makes uh, these queries a bit more efficient because then um, if we know the, we only have to access one parquet file, we only have to join it with the, a small set of position delete files. Um, and then in the background, uh, there's like these background processes in, uh, in Postgres that, uh, that do compaction. So if you have a lot of small inserts, it'll uh, just sort of concatenate those parquet files and write them back. Again, that, uh, that delegates the work to, uh, to DuckDB. So we don't use the DuckDB iceberg extension, uh, because we needed to do writes and it doesn't do that yet. Uh, I think that is getting added, but also we needed like very precise uh, control over everything that happens. And so we also implemented Iceberg from scratch in C. It's probably one of the only <laughs> Iceberg C implementations. Uh, so why would you actually do this? Uh, so there's a lot of data warehouses out there. Well, uh, so would you now run analytical workloads directly on your operational database? Probably not. I've, I've not seen a lot of cases where that's really what you want to do because you're 
application developers and analysts, they work in different teams, different environments, different tools, different data models, um, and uh, different access control, different resources. There's a lot of reasons why you don't want to do this. Um, but there's a bunch of reasons why you would want to do this. One thing we've seen quite a lot is what we call the, the accidental Postgres data warehouse. A lot of companies, like they, they build their application first, often using Postgres. Uh, maybe the application becomes successful. Uh, your database grows. You start having business questions, but you don't really have time to kind of optimize your architecture. So you just start running your analytics on Postgres. This happens quite a lot. And at some point, it gets very slow. So if there's a system that can just do that more quickly, uh, that's actually very attractive. Also, we find that there's these interesting combinations of analytical capabilities and operational capabilities. For example, we can create this insert queue for an iceberg table. You insert into the Postgres server. Periodically, we delete everything from that table and insert it into the iceberg uh, table. And that's a sort of transactional operation. Uh, also, we see that a lot of our kind of more operational uh, Postgres users, they just find it nice that they can archive data into uh, Iceberg or maybe just into Parquet and S3. Uh, so that's a, a useful combination as well. And of course, that if you have data in an operational database that you want to move into an analytical database, it's nice that all the types remain the same, all the kind of functionality and, and uh, data model remains the same. So here's a quick uh, recorded demo of kind of combining some of these features. So uh, first we create an iceberg table. You can use quite a few Postgres features here, default columns, expressions, sequences, uh, triggers. Um, so then we batch load some data into uh, this iceberg table. It takes a few seconds. I can do any query there. And because we cache uh, the files, the, the response time is actually very low. But if I do just like a single row insert, it can still take, uh, I'll use it like one second or a few seconds. So that's not great. But what I can do is I can create a heap table. I can set up a periodic job that deletes from the heap table and inserts into the iceberg table. And now I can insert with like less than a millisecond like I usually can on Postgres. And uh, because this runs every five seconds, it's already been inserted into iceberg. Uh, and then every 10 minutes we run the, the compaction. So it's pretty nice to kind of bring together uh, these capabilities uh, in this way. Um, now, you know, given that we're all friends of Lakekeeper, uh, we also have been doing a, a little POC where, uh, so by default, you can use Frenchy Data Warehouse. If you want to use a different query engine, you can just use the SQL catalog driver of PyIceberg or the JWC driver in, in Spark. Uh, but, you know, the, the landscape is moving towards the REST catalog. But Lakekeeper actually keeps its uh, metadata in Postgres. We keep our metadata in Postgres. It's roughly similar, like just URLs to, to metadata files. So what we uh, can do is actually set up uh, triggers on our tables that if a write happens to an iceberg table, we sync it into the Lakekeeper uh, tables in the, in the back end. So then you can actually talk uh, to French Data Warehouse via the, the REST catalog as well, just by, uh, by running Lakekeeper. So that's pretty cool. Sort of POC stage, I think it actually works, works pretty well. We just need to kind of have a end-to-end -end setup uh, working. So yeah, summary is Postgres can offer a pretty simple experience uh, for Iceberg, uh, even with like full transaction support and support for a lot of uh, the Postgres feature set. And then DuckDB is a way to make that really fast if you kind of uh, do the incantations of extending the Postgres query planner to delegate part of it to DuckDB. And uh, then you can interoperate with other query engines still via the SQL catalog uh, protocol, or you can set up something like Lightkeeper to put a REST API in front. Um, so yeah, we built the first version of this uh, in, in November and or shipped the first version of this in November. Uh, and then uh, like yesterday, we announced that it's now on Kubernetes as well. Um, but then, like, there's also several other projects trying to do this because it's it's very useful. So there's a PG Mooncake project, for example, that's doing this. Uh, I think EDB also has a, has a project ongoing. So uh, let's see how it goes. It's uh, it's been a fun project to work on. Any uh, any questions?
you. Um, yes, you briefly mentioned transactions. So I'm kind of curious how would transaction work when you writing to both iceberg tables and Postgres tables? Yeah, so in, in iceberg, the, the catalog is the arbitrator of transactions. So uh, you can always, for example, do transactions across multiple iceberg tables if you just do a transaction on the backing store on, of the catalog. And in our case, we don't have a separate catalog. We are the catalog. So it's just everything we do is sort of part of the same transaction. Uh, so we can write to heap table, write to iceberg table, and it's, uh, it's, it's one Postgres transaction. 